Donald Trump. I want another interview. Do you have a best friend? Well, I have so many different friends, and it would be hard to say a best friend. Is your wife Ivana a best friend? She's she's a she's a great friend. Yeah, Ivana, a great friend. Good evening. I'm Connie Chun. We'll have that interview with Donald Trump a bit later. I go 12 rounds with him. But first, a story. Who cares, right? I don't know what it's like in your city, but here in New York, the fuss about the Trumps is ridiculous. Well, here's my story. I did an interview with the Donald just hours, we believe, before he dropped the bomb on Ivana. So you see, I'm asking him questions with no idea of what's going on in his head. He knows his marriage is breaking up. I don't. But knowing what we know now, his answers are kind of fascinating. The pregnant pauses, is he squirming? Is he telling me less than the truth? You decide. If you called up somebody else that you've never even heard of who's got great wealth and said, I want to do an interview, number one, they'd be afraid to do it. Number two, they wouldn't want to do it. Number three, they wouldn't know how to do it. And number four, they're probably right. They're probably right? They're probably right. What I do you mean, mean they shouldn't? Well, I think, I think there's a nice safety net in not doing it. Uh -huh. I mean, there's no reason to expose yourself to millions of people. There's but no... you know why you do it? Why? You me. love the publicity. Oh, I hate the publicity. Oh, come on, get oh, no, out of here. I'm telling you, I hate the publicity. Oh, please. I hate it. And except for the fact that it's fun as a sparring session, I mean, this would normally not even be, be fun. This is, this is fine, and this is fun. No, and all but that come stuff, on. But I don't like it. No, no, you're on all these covers no, you don't understand of Playboy it. fame. I mean, uh, whether you, you it's Newsweek or it happens to be. It happens to be, or well, both. It oh. happens to be <laughs> good for what I do. What Donald Trump does, of course, is make a lot of money and make sure everybody knows it. A yacht, a mansion, a bigger mansion, an airline, two casinos, a bigger casino. That is really incredible. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like this place. By now, his possessions are more familiar to us than what we have hanging in our own closets. His buildings, well, you know which ones they are. I sell very great condominiums in New York. I have the best they casinos aren't that in the great. world. They're Come the best. On. What, They're the Trump the Tower? Best. Maybe if you can try and answer this question without giving me the normal spiel. Huh? What is the normal spiel? I don't well, know. Well, the normal spiel is well, the fact is is that many rich and powerful people um, do try to remain anonymous. But you became very public very clearly by your own design. I don't know if it was by my own design. You mean the publicity? I do developments which get a lot of publicity. I mean, if, Trump, oh, if I didn't on. do Trump, I mean this. If Trump Tower weren't a great building on Fifth Avenue and 57th Street by a Trump young Tower guy. Trump Tower is one building in New York City with zillions of buildings. Trump Tower was built by it's a young guy you know in a very to... important location. No, I don't, yeah. I don't think it was by design, though. I think that it, it happens, so but I don't innocent. know. No, Come on. I, I want to be innocent. I've always wanted to be innocent. My this entire bit, life has been devoted to being innocent. Is it little Donald? <laughs> but I don't know that it was by design. Did I once you... call you and ever say, Connie, we have to do an interview. We have to do this. It's great. It's going to be the but greatest thing. Did, okay, Donald Trump didn't call us, but he did do this interview just before an avalanche of publicity about his marriage descended on the empire he worked so skillfully to build. Is it true about the invincibility of the Trump name is now bombarded by gossip about secret liaisons and bedroom prowess. And the success of Trump the man is now the stuff of prenuptial pacts. Overnight, it seems, America turned from a fascination with what Trump has to what he could lose. Do you wish we'd all go away? <laughs> Absolutely. What is the most important thing in your life? I think, generally speaking, family i think that um i think it's very important uh, stability i like to say continued economic success you would always say the most important thing would be health for yourself and the people around you and the people that you love because that's all ul that's ultimately the most important thing do you have a best friend well, I have so many different friends, and it would be hard to say a best friend. Is your wife, Ivana, a best friend? She's, she's, a, she's a great friend. She's, uh, I have a father who's a great friend. I mean, is there somebody that you really confide in? Uh, I, I tend not to confide. I really tend not to confide. I'm very closed in that sense. Now, I think that's my own maybe guarded mechanism. Is it that you don't trust 
people? I don't trust people, no. I'm, I'm a, a non-trusting person. I trust members of my family. I trust people that are very close to me. But you know what? They also say you should never go into business with members of your family. Oh, I agree with that. Going into business with family members is either the best or the worst. There's no in between. Mm -hmm. Well, your brother, Robert, is... Robert does a great job, and Ivana runs the Plaza Hotel, and right. she's doing a beautiful job. So, but you just said to me that you don't think that family members no, should. No, no. I, I generally think it's not a good policy. But, but it I works also in your family? It works in my family, and I also think it's a great policy if it does work. When for some reason it doesn't work out, there can be nothing worse. Well, how do you know it isn't going to go sour? I don't. You never do. What may sour on Donald Trump is that beautiful job he says his wife Ivana has done with the plaza. How beautiful? And how much could that be worth in any divorce settlement? Trump, family, and business have been together for a while. His start in real estate was with his father, himself a millionaire developer in Brooklyn and Queens. His older brother Fred was also in the business for a short time. He died at 43, the same age Donald is now. I've seen people confide in the wrong people, and it's really been devastating. But do you and think again, I don't say that as a positive. A kid, do you think when you were a kid? Well, I think it stems from the fact that I had a brother who who was an extraordinary guy. He was a, a an absolutely brilliant personality. He was a handsome. He was wonderful. People loved him. He was nice. He confided to everybody. He was truly a nice human being, and people took advantage of him. And I saw what they did to my brother, and I didn't like it. He gave of himself 100%. He totally gave. He, he totally gave of himself. And he gave of himself, himself to other up. people. He absolutely did. Mm -hmm. And I tend to be just the opposite. There's a marvelous innocence about that, though, isn't there? Th there's something very beautiful about it. Unfortunately, when you're growing up in New York City and you're dealing with some of the great sharks of the world, especially in the real estate business, it's not very good. It was very bad in a business sense. He was, he was uh, taken but advantage of. he didn't of. want to go into business anyway. He didn't want to. You're right. absolutely right. He so, didn't want to. He should not have. And perhaps it was my fault and perhaps my father's fault for egging him on into business because he wasn't good at it because he didn't like the business. And you he, also encouraged him to go into business? I did. I don't like to think too much about what happened with Fred. With Fred, it was an alcohol problem. And he, he, it ultimately, all of what I'm saying led to alcoholism and, and uh, that indirectly just killed him. Fred used to tell me when I was very young, don't ever smoke, don't ever, ever smoke, don't ever drink. See, he had these problems. He knew what the problems were. He couldn't solve them for himself, but he tried to solve them for me. Donald Trump doesn't smoke and doesn't drink. He gets by on four or five hours of sleep and gets up before dawn for a day that may end with as many as four social events a night. I think I'm relatively happy. I'm content, certainly. I'm not a man that walks around smiling and telling everybody I'm happy, I'm happy, here I am. But I'm, I'm a pretty content guy. Everybody's life is not perfect. Mm -hmm. What's missing in yours? What's wrong with you? I really don't like to think about what's missing. You know, if you get into what's missing, you don't appreciate what you have. And well, well, you can also it? say... There must be a little something that's wrong with it. Um, you know, because it's always something. I'm always looking for more excitement in life. I look at life as one time, here we are, it's a one time go around. I'm always looking for more excitement. Oftentimes, I would not consider my life to be the most exciting life in the world. And probably the world would tell me I'm crazy because I think the world's perception of me and my life is much different than that. Is it meeting someone who impresses you? No, it's not meeting someone. It's doing something. It's achieving something. It's, it's the thrill of doing. When I buy the Plaza Hotel, to me, that's exciting because it's, it's a trophy. It's a total trophy. When I build Trump Tower, or when I build the Taj Mahal, yeah, but which you know, is, it, it sounds like baubles. You yeah, understand but, that. But it's exciting. And part of the reason it's exciting is because they're mega deals, they're important deals, they're glamorous deals. Everybody talks about them. Everybody reads about them and writes about them. Uh, there's a level of importance there that I think also somewhat turns me on. Uh, yeah, but how, well, how is it important? It's not socially redeeming. It's well, you not can say that, but, something but in actuality, thousands and thousands of people are put to work. Millions and hundreds of millions of dollars of taxes are paid. building luxury and hotels, that, yeah, luxury but, but, casinos. But Connie, you all know, of that money. It's sort of the rich stuff and all that. I know, I know. And I've also done non-luxury. I've done a lot of low-income housing. I've done a lot of senior citizens. That was housing. a long time ago. Oh, you've, you've, read, you've read my past. Hey, you have read my past. But the truth is, whether I build a Trump Tower or whether I build senior citizens' housing, I think Trump Tower in many respects is, and I'm very proud of the senior citizens' housing I built. Long time ago, though. Doesn't Not matter. Recently. I mean, it doesn't matter. No. Not recently. Kind no, of. since you've made your Manhattan Trump millions, or you're up to a billion, more than a billion now. 
I hope so. And right. so what are you asking me? So I'm asking you, why not do more of that? Well, let me ask you, I do a book, and I give millions of dollars from the book. The book turned out to be like the biggest book of the year, and I give all of that money to charity. I do a game, I do a game show, I do the Wallman skating rink where the city incompetently for seven years can't oh, open a, a rink. It's a skating rink. Come it's on. a very it's important a thing. Rink. It's a part no, of it's society. Fun. It's an important I mean, it's thing. Skating rink. You know, it's a skating it's, rink. Sure, it's a skating rink, but in the meantime, you had half of New York City going crazy because they didn't have their little skating rink. Do you really feel like a philanthropic person? I feel very philanthropic. Do I really you? do. And I'm a really? young guy. You know, people don't believe that. Oh, I think people believe it. See, it you gets to a point where some people can never be satisfied, Connie. Perhaps you're one of those people. Family, his three children. I try and spend as much time with them as possible. And I think that's important. And I think they see. And, and I think they also understand that my life is different and my, they're at an age now where they understand it. But I really spend, I think, as much time as you can spend under the circumstances in which I live. You're able to peel away from work for a for Absolutely, dinner? I have to. I Every mean, night? If my son calls me, as an example, I'll always take his call no matter what I'm doing. I mean, I'll always take his call. I always feel that it's very important to be really with the children. The Your children son, Donald special. Jr.? Donald Jr., any, any, any one of my children. If any one of my children, two. if any one of my children call, I'll always take their call, no matter what I'm doing. I know that your parents brought you up with a good set of values. I know that your, your sister had said that and that uh, your mother was a homemaker. Um, your children are growing up in an entirely different kind of uh, family. Right. Do you think it is the family you want them to grow up in? Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I don't think I have a choice. I mean, uh, it's it's a family that's uh, it's a good family. It's a good life. Uh, I think when Ivanka, I often say, looks at Mar-a-Lago, my daughter, and she walks into the halls of Mar-a-Lago, which is a home in Palm Beach that I bought in all fairness as an investment. But I more than a hundred rooms. Yeah, and and when she looks, and it's magnificent. You see this little girl, and she looks up, and she says, oh, you know. And, and I just wonder what she must be thinking, because it can't be a normal situation. But I think maybe it's as normal as it's going to get. I think she takes it for granted, perhaps, and maybe that's good or maybe it's not good. But to her, it's a normal situation. Don't you think it's probably not good? Uh, I don't know. I'll tell you about it in 20 years after they grow up. I can't tell you now. You could prevent yourself from buying um, the home in Palm Beach or the Khashoggi yacht, but and then your children wouldn't be exposed to this yeah. extraordinary, ostentatious wealth. Well, I don't know what ostentatious means. I mean, the Mar-a-Lago is considered architecturally one of the great places of this continent. Oh, but uh, you know what I'm talking about. The yacht about. is considered. But, but let me tell you, I don't do it for that reason. I do it as an investment. I, I mean, know, I buy the yacht. Aren't you concerned about the effect on your children? Well, I, no, because I don't think it has an effect. I think, I think the effect on the children is seeing good parents or seeing this or seeing that. I don't think the effect on the children is whether they go into a big yacht or a small yacht or a, a regular boat or something else, or whether it's a big house or a small house. I think that's not. I mean, there are very many unhappy children that have a one-bedroom apartment, that live in a one-bedroom apartment with their parents. And I know, but you know what I'm talking about. No, the I kids understand. Are gonna get but I do it as an investment. They go on a yacht, don't they? Sure, they go on it, but very seldom. But I do it as an investment. I don't need, necessarily, to live like this. I could be very happy living in a one-bedroom apartment. So why me. don't you, just for the heck I might try it. I mean, maybe, maybe one of these days we'll give it a shot. I, uh, I really feel good about the way things are. I, you have? You've gone through the, the I mean, a midlife crisis is well, very Well, I'm saying, I think, I don't think it's been a traumatic period for me. I mean, you know, I think men do have a midlife crisis. I don't think from my standpoint it's been a particularly traumatic period. No? Maybe I haven't been there yet. Because I'm not I'm... sure that I'm really at midlife yet. I hope I'm not. <laughs> so maybe I haven't been there yet. I'll make you a deal. If I do go through a midlife life crisis, I'll call you. I'll let you know. It'll be very exciting.